Hi there, I'm Nikta from Clipfolio, and I'm here to give you a quick 101 overview on APIs. APIs, which stand for Application Programming Interface, are becoming more and more prevalent these days. We certainly use them all the time here at Clipfolio, so I wanted to share some basics of APIs with you to help you get started. But first, why should you invest the time and energy into learning about APIs? Well, the truth is that APIs open up a universe of possibilities to improve how you do your job. So many tasks can be automated using them, which saves you and your business time and money and reduces the likelihood of human error. APIs allow apps to talk to one another. Imagine having a new record created in Infusionsoft as soon as you create an invoice in QuickBooks. Or imagine updating a record in Salesforce every time a support ticket is resolved in Zendesk. The best part? APIs are not just for developers. Developers certainly have an easier time working with APIs, but you don't have to have a programming background in order to leverage APIs for yourself. Now to get started with a particular API, you'll want to get your hands on that API's documentation. So let's go over some of the common terminology that you will come across when reading API docs. By the way, there are different types of APIs, including SOAP and REST. In this video, I'll only be covering information on REST APIs. First, authentication. This is how the API identifies you. The authentication process ensures that you're only getting access to data that you're authorized to access. Common techniques include OAuth and API keys. Oftentimes an application will have a place in your account settings where you can find API keys. Here's an example from Moz. By the way, these keys have different names, API key, access ID, secret key, but the names don't really matter. They're all used in the same way. OAuth, on the other hand, is when you have a little pop-up window that asks if you permit App A to access information in App B. In Clipfolio, we support OAuth for over 20 different services, so you will see that kind of behavior often if you're adding new clips to your dashboard or, or building a new data source. Next is the base URL. This is the consistent part of the API query, similar to the domain of a website. You can think of APIs as having a very similar folder-like structure to domains and URLs. In these examples, you can see I'm accessing different information from the Facebook API, but the base URL is always the same. The base URL isn't always just the part up to the .com either. Take a look at this example from the Google Analytics API. In this case, the base URL is googleapis.com slash analytics slash v2.4 slash data, where the v2.4 specifies the version of the API you're making a call against. Generally speaking, the stuff that follows the base URL is the endpoint. If you think of the API as a filing cabinet, then the endpoint picks up the specific file that you're looking for. In this case, we want to look at our page fans by country from the Facebook API. We can refine our query by adding parameters. Parameters are useful for filtering data for a certain time range, sorting data, pulling a certain number of data points. It all depends on the specific API. In this case, for Google Analytics, you can see that I'm pulling the number of users, sessions, and page views by page path. I'm only retrieving results between a certain start and end date, and I'm filtering the data to only page paths that contain the word, word blog. You can spot parameters in a query by looking for the question mark. All following parameters are separated using an ampersand. So where do you find all the possible endpoints and parameters? All this information is documented in what's called the API reference. Sometimes it's just woven right into the API docs. Notice how in this example, underneath the reference, we can see that the MailChimp API allows us to retrieve information about campaigns, lists, reports, and so on. And finally, the response. This is what the API returns after you query it. Data from APIs often is returned in JSON, XML, or CSV formats. So let's say you're trying to build a custom clipping clipfolio so you can get your hands on a specific metric that will really impact your business. You may need to make a custom query against an API. How do you go about retrieving the data you're looking for? First, grab a coffee. Reading through API documentation requires some time and patience. Next, Control F is your friend. I often use Control F to quickly locate the reference, read more about authentication, or look for particular endpoints or parameters. You can often find what you need to know by skimming API docs. Then once you're ready to craft your query, you can always dive in deeper. And remember, our support team is always here to help. We may not be experts in the API you're looking to connect with, but we can always help navigate the docs and provide some additional tips to help get you started. Hope this was a useful overview of API terminology. Thanks for watching.